Hello! I'm Necro, and today I'm going to be taking you through the Seeds and Adventurer's Tome items of Kalaja. There's not actually a lot to collect here, but there is a lot of information I'd like to share with you about the cooking items, so without further ado, let's begin. We're going to be starting out at the Black Falcon Inn Triport. Right beside of the Triport is a cluster of swords, and underneath these swords is a Makoko Seed, but to be able to access them, we're going to need the Soulful Requiem, which is a reward for hitting 60% in the Fate and Adventurer's Tome which I don't have right now, so I'll be coming back to it in a separate video if you'd like to follow me along, but for now it's important to take note of. Next we'll be coming down from the triport a little bit and walking into the side of the inn, and we'll make our way down to the first floor where beside this big statue we're going to find a seed. Across the room from the seed stands Eod. She'll sell us wood blood and the fresh vegetable supply crate. We'll be needing these items for the bloody fist and the eel caviar salad respectively. On the right side of the second floor of the inn, we'll run into Janet, the cook NPC, and in her crafting menu, you'll find both of these items. The Bloody Fist being here is a bit of a red herring, because in order to craft it from her, you need the Emptied Bloody Fist, which you can only get by acquiring the Bloody Fist and using it first. The purpose of this is so you can use this Bloody Fist to access hidden areas later on, and the game probably just wants to give us an easy way to get it back, considering how hard it is to get in the first place. The Eel Caviar Salad, on the other hand, has four ingredients, three of which are available to you now. The vine needle grass, the swamp moss, and the plain weed all have a chance to drop from the vegetable supply crate we just picked up. The numbers here are pretty deceptive though because you're going to need a lot more than 50 crates. The vine needle grass, for instance, has about a 96% chance drop rate, whereas the swamp moss is about 3% and the plain weed is only about 1%. The average cost of getting these ingredients from the crates is about 400,000 silver, according to maxroll.gg. The eel caviar is a little different, you're going to have to use one of your daily field boss kills to take out Ancelotus, who spawns up at Red Moonshade. You can see his spawn right here on the map, denoted by this marker. He's this big rock guy right here. As of the recording of this video, the timers are still messed up, so the best way to check when field bosses spawn is to come to your Procyon's compass over here, click on appearance notification info, and under the field boss tab, you can see the day and time when each boss spawns, which will line up with your in-game timer. It's not a terribly difficult boss, but it is a pain to have to spend your one daily field boss kill trying to get the Adventurer's Tome item, but hey, it is what it is. Now with all that said, a word of warning, you could spend hundreds of thousands or even millions of silver trying to get these two items. So what I'm going to be doing and what I would recommend to you all is to save these two items for last. With everything else in the Adventurer's Tome that we still have to collect, we'll easily get all the useful stuff here. So I'm only going to be spending the silver once I have a chance of pushing for the Ignea token. But while we're here, let's get cheeky and try our luck a couple times. One, two, three. What we're really after here is a failed distilled beverage, which we're going to need in just a second to find ourselves a seed. Now we're gonna head back to the same triport, and this time head north up these stairs. And at here on the map, these boxes are obscuring a Makoko seed. We're gonna keep going on, and right here, we're gonna go ahead and use one of our failed distilled beverages to give ourselves this buff, and we should be able to walk through this door. In the back left corner, we're going to find a secret seed. Next, we're going to make our way down to the old plaza. And from the triport, we're going to take a left, heading past the Avesta Church. And here at these statues, if you search towards the north side of it, you're going to find the start of the secret of the underground storage hidden story. Now we're going to head into the cathedral. And from the entrance, we're going to be taking the left flight of stairs here. And from the far side of this map table, if you look beside this candelabra, you'll find number two of two to finish it. There's one more thing further down the stairs worth noting. Down at the bottom of the stairs, we're going to see a familiar face, Jeremian, who is, again, gatekeeping us from getting a secret seed. For this one, he'll make a quip about being clever enough, which means we're going to need to get ourselves 300 wisdom before we can access this seed. So like me, if you don't have enough, then just keep it in the back of your mind and we'll come back later. And up here in the church's atrium, I have a quest to pick up from Lucas. This one's called Letters in the Jar. Letters in the Jar is about halfway through the long quest line to finally unlock another story, The Last Melody of a Requiem. You might already have this unlocked if you did all of the side quests in Phaeton as they appeared, but if you like to skip around a lot like I do, you might have missed a couple. For instance, the quest chain doesn't start in earnest until you finish both Market Investigation and Withered Future. Market Investigation will start in the Nameless Valley at about this spot in the map, and Withered Future will be right here inside of the inn, given to you by Retired Agent Kale. Once you finish these two quests, you'll be able to start this quest chain from Kinsera here at the top of the inn. As you can see here, this is a five-part quest chain starting with the Black Eye of Fate. Once you finish Black Eye of Fate, you'll have to wait another day before she offers you Kinsera's and rinse and repeat for all five steps. 
but you only have to do the second part of this to continue on with the important part. Once you finish Kinsera's Lucky Day and those buried in the Dark Ground, which you'll receive from Kaldor after finishing the Fate and Main story, you'll be able to take the Den of Buried Sins and this quest from Lucas II, Letters in the Jar. Once you're finished with those quests, you'll be able to come back here to the Black Falcon Inn and talk to Kale again. He'll give you the quest Fate and Wild Cake. As you can see here, this is a three-part quest. These ones are also going to be dailies, like Kinsera's quests. It'll take you two resets to be able to finish the entire quest chain. And then once that three-part quest chain is done, we'll be able to finally take the last melody of a Requiem from Kaldor here. And that will unlock Levi as a rapport NPC for us to work on. He, along with Nobby the cat in front of the inn, and Lucia way down in the crematorium are going to be our rapport NPCs for Kalaja. Including Jaderico in the Nameless Valley, we're going to have our work cut out for us with these guys. So I think it's absolutely worth mentioning that the Wandering Merchant of Phaeton only comes to right here in the center of Kalaja, right beside of the portal statue. She sells a bunch of rapport items that will greatly reduce the amount of time you have to build rapport with these NPCs. So if you're interested in speeding that up for a little bit of extra silver, I'll leave her schedule in the description. Next, we're going to the Snake Valley Triport and sliding down this zipline to right here on the map, where we'll find another cluster of swords that will reveal a seed when we play the Soulful Requiem. Next, we're going to continue around the outside loop of this map to the Hardship Hill part of the map, beside all of these bickering kids. If you check near this hay pile right here, you're going to find yourself another seed. Now we're going to run to the center of Kalaja, right beside of the portal statue. You're going to find a vista for the Canyon Village. Now head down the stairs right beside of you. Right where you pop out beside of Padma, we're going to find another cluster of sores that requires Soulful Requiem. We'll jump the gap. And again. We're going to head to the far right side of the bottom level. And in the middle of this freaky orchard, you can see another seed. For our final stop, we're going to go back and visit Lucia. From directly where she's at on the map, if you walk to the back of the crematorium, you will find the final seed of Kalaja. And that will finally wrap up Kalaja. This video definitely ran on a little bit longer than I expected, but I hope there was a lot of good, useful information for you. If there was, please consider liking the video. It would mean so much to me. Subscribe if you'd like to see the rest of this series, and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to do better. We're going to be heading to the Wailing Swamp next, so until then, that'll be all for me. See ya!